Hello and welcome to Kirtman Space Ram, where I accidentally opened Uplay in the background. Today I'm going back to more plane reviews with encoding overloaded, apparently. I'm sorry if that's happening and this is choppy or incomprehensible. Today we're starting off with the Sunshine Unit by Calm Llama, which I honestly had thought I'd already looked at, but apparently not. I just forgot about it or whatever. So, um, if you didn't know, if you didn't know what a Sunshine Unit is, uh, that's what the government used to call, uh, that's what they used to use for measuring radiation. It's now called a strontium unit. And, uh, I love this. Uh, the, uh, Kam Lama, he says, uh, I, I couldn't think of a good use for this plane, so I named it after how deceptive and useless the U.S. government can be. Haha! -ha. Has excellent post-stall characteristics, a very tight turning radius. Be sure not to drop below 40 meters per second. Takeoff speed is about 55 meters per second, and landing speed is about 60 meters per second. And it's got lots of Z-fighting! The fighting. It's also got a ladder on it, which is cool, but I'm, I'm not going to use that because we already have Mike Kerman aboard and... Huh. Huh. For some reason the turbojet looked different to me than it normally does. Uh, maybe that's because I've been playing in 1.2 a lot and maybe they modified it ever so slightly. I don't think so though. I think it's just in my mind. In any case, here we are, flying. I wasn't even paying attention to our speeds. Now let's turn really, really tight and see how well that works. Looks like it works very well. Now he said not to let it get below 40 meters per second. So of course, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and get it below 40 meters per second. There we go, below 40 meters per second. And it's uh, performing quite well below 40 meters per second, even though it's, uh, it's not designed to or intended to. Yes, it's flying quite nicely. I noticed you use the big, um, whatchamacallit, aeroplane control surfaces. Those are cool. Fat 455s. I didn't even realize they were called that until just now. And that was a radar dish. Huh. We, uh... <laughs> there we go. Nice landing. Nice landing. I mean, not really a nice landing, but yes, we did land. We did survive that. Quite horrible little crash. I forgot that I have Kerbal Crash System because, like I said, I was in playing in I was playing in 1.2 a lot recently, and obviously I don't have it there. So yes, that's kind of funny. All right, so I'm gonna give it one more quick little fight, flight, not flight, not fight, flight, and uh, I really do mean oh god, quick, ah, because I am using time warp. Oh yeah, I forgot I still had. Oh excuse me, the. Uh, the aircraft carrier out there from last episode. So, uh, uh, we don't have a weapon manager, so I can't make it mad at me. But I can make the frame rate tank, which is what I've already done by going into loading range. So let's go away from it at high speeds. And now things are performing wonderfully again. It's oscillating wildly because I'm time warping and it's not designed to handle that. But, uh, good, good, good. Very high speed. Let's just go, like, close to the ground and then pull up as hard as we can and just see if this thing falls apart or breaks or what. Very nice. Handled this quite well. Very good. Very good, sir. Very good. Alright, now let's land it. Why did only the front landing gear come down? Um... Did I break the rear landing gear somehow? Okay, well, looks like the rear landing gear is broken, so we're gonna have to do an emergency landing very, very gently. And we're already flying way below what it's supposed to be able to fly at, but that's fine. <laughs> I actually broke the landing gear on touchdown. That's great. All right. Well, the only thing we broke on touchdown was the front landing gear. Of course, that's because of the crash system, but still, that was pretty nice. We also apparently broke Mike. What? What? Okay then. Next up is the K4 Whitebird by Club Squirrel with a center of lift very far back. Interesting. And this is apparently supposed to be a reconnaissance. Ooh, this highly advanced recon plane is for very high, very fast missions capable of being armed. Recommended with Pack 3 missiles. Its main role is a recon plane, but can be outfitted for intercepting roles. It's not ideally made for that, though. It's a very quick plane, and it's just made for recon. Cool. All right, here we go. Gonna time warp just a bit to get us a little bit of speed. Get us off the ground. Looks like it takes off comfortably at 100 meters per second. And I'm immediately going to start 
going to left because I really don't want to get within four kilometers of that carrier again. I'm gonna, uh, after I'm done with this, I'm gonna go move that carrier out to seas a little bit further so that it does not interfere with takeoffs so readily. Maybe make it go a bit north into this bay area. I'm not sure. But in any case, fairly agile little thing. Can sustain speed quite well while turning. Can go pretty darn fast, apparently. Ooh, look at this! Jeez, it's been a while since I've seen uh, mods because I've been playing in 1.2 a lot and it's stock. So this is just neat and new, even though it's not that new or neat. That's cool. ASL altitude and terrain altitude, which the terrain altitude's kind of bumping up and down as we're going over bumpy terrain. Pretty good speed we're going at. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder what e oh estimated airspeed. So why is our airspeed lower than is there is there wind? No, <laughs> our estimated airspeed is uh, lower than our uh, than our actual speed. And then of course we have horizontal speed. Oops. Throttle. Is that what does this mean? Two hundred a hundred percent two hundred thirty three three. Is that like our thrust to weight ratio? Like as a percentage? It's interesting. It also gives us trim. And yes, I was mostly looking at that stuff to buy time while this thing went faster and faster, by the way. It wasn't that I completely got distracted, although it mostly was. However, this thing is oscillating quite dangerously. I would, uh, I would be very worried about that. Usually oscillations are not a good thing. If nothing else, they're bad for your performance because they make things, well, as you can see, we're losing a lot of speed and stuff due to altitude. Also, I'm pulling up now because I, uh, I don't want us to crash. I spoke a split second too soon. And did not pull up hard enough. I feel like it deserves one more brief go considering how badly I screwed everything up. This time, of course, I'm starting my turn on the runway, so we're actually not even going to take off from the runway because I'm starting my turn that soon. Whoops. Oh, dear. Let's control it. And now, after flying for a little while in a direction I normally don't go, going by those mountains at what speed are we going at? 754 meters per second, that's pretty fast, especially for this low in the altitude, and we are aiming down for some reason. Let's roll and pitch. Oh dear, that... the roll performance is quite good. Pitch, not so much. And uh, losing a lot of speed during this turn, but yeah. Recon plane goes very, very fast. Looks pretty cool. Angular. Interesting. And that's pretty much all there is to say about it. Next, we have the Crown 11 Fan Ray, which is a really cool looking design I've been looking forward to taking a look at, and I've said look far too many times in that sentence. If you'll just look at the transcript, there is no transcript, by Benanders. And so you can see it's a forward swept wing. It makes me think a little bit of an Su-47, and it's got just it's two panthers it's got intakes it's like an upside down plane with the inverted wings and it's got weapons and it's just it's a cool idea overall and also it's got weapons like i know i already said that but it's got what <gasps> it's got bd armory you know what this means time to attack the aircraft carrier all right here goes oh afterburners are on by default no action group info so i don't know if i can uh, turn that off or not wow that thing got off the ground quite quickly let's go ahead and get our radar warning receiver online and get our radome on. Let's go ahead and... Uh-oh. It's time to load in the enemy. We're going quite fast. Holy shit. All right. Um, yeah, I get the distinct feeling this is not going to go terribly well for us. All right. Let's arm the trigger. Oh, dear. All right. I've let loose a missile, hopefully. Um... Hopefully these maneuvers are enough to keep it from getting us. Trying not to lose too much speed while also firing at it. Oh dear. Alright. Lots of gunfire going near us, but not hitting us. I'm going to kind of generally turn slowly around back towards it. Or turn a bit quicker, as the case may be. Alright. Get another radar lock. Fire a missile. I hope I fired a missile. I can't really tell. Oh dear. Yep, most of us are dead. Most of us is dead. Um, wait, no, I was gonna say switch to switch to another uh, 
switch to the A team so we wouldn't get blown up. But yes, this thing is quite capable of defending itself, as you can see here. Very nice. And I'm going to go ahead and take off with this again. Very quick little takeoff. And this time I'm going to. Wow! Super maneuverable. Pitch it around and uh, fly this way for a bit. Oh, these things are activated. Cool. Authority limiter negative 100. So the way they made them actually work properly is by using the authority limiter on them. That's great. Are they actually working quite well? Let's find out. Yes. Awesome. That's cool. It's a very meta-stable design. I'm not sure if that's even a word. Oh, apparently I figured out how to deploy flare and chaff. It was with two. And, I mean, with one. And I'm hitting other buttons and nothing else seems to be happening. As far as I can tell. But, that is cool. It's fun to fly. Oh, come on. Let's go ahead and fire the missile. Also, I noticed that the gimbals are locked, which is interesting. Like, normally, uh, super maneuverability relies on thrust vectoring, at least to some degree. But this design can do it with aerodynamics, which is pretty cool. I like it. I like it very much. Thank you for sending it in. Alright, and for the last plane I shall take a look at today, a look at, a look at today, the P-10 by Epic Man 352, which has some old school weaponry on it, uh, Aviator Arsenal, I believe, is what's powering this, as well as, uh, crap, I forget which mod does this bit, the, uh, the propeller, it's, it's, it's something, oh my god, there's a lot of stuff in here, holy shit, I didn't even know I had this much stuff, ooh, what's this thing, it's a linear aerospike rocket, that's cool. Uh, Airplane Plus, I believe, is the one that made that. Oh no, it's Quiztech. Or maybe, yeah. I, hmm. I have no idea. I think it's Quiztech. Well, in any case, it does list it on the crafts page on Kerbal X, so of course, you can find out from there. And we're gonna go ahead and get it into the air and do a ridiculously stupid maneuver by doing a backflip. That went surprisingly well. Also, since it does have BTA armory. Oh, the guns aren't working. Oh wait, trigger is disarmed. Duh. Oh, they're still not working. What? They're not working. Aw. Did you forget to park the pa park? Pack the ammo. Whoops, wrong button. Oh yeah, did I fix the setting? Oh yeah, that would explain why things are too loud. Yeah, that needs to be lower. And that lower. Uh Physics distance, 10,000. Apply. And what else do I need to do? That's all. Okay, cool. Good thing we got 10,000 away from that before I activated that button. Yeah, so it's a pretty maneuverable little thing. Pretty fast little fighter. I wish I could fire the guns. I'm, I'm really sad that I can't fire the guns because I have a feeling it would be fun to hear them going off while this is firing. Might be a mod incompatibility. Oh, that sucks. Oh well. Still fun to fly. And nearly crash into the ground, but pull out of the dive I was in. Oh, this is fun. This is fun, flying this thing really low and dangerous like this. Like, I don't even know how high above the ground I'm getting. Too low right now. Yeah, that was almost a crash. Not quite. Oh, this thing does not do inverted very well. Actually, yeah, that went surprisingly well. Man. Oh dear, that's not going to recover. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's keep flying. Screw it. Because we have Cribble Crash System, so that was completely fine. Even though that should have killed us. <laughs> we are uh, leaking from the engine, or not the engine, from our tanks quite rapidly though. I'm surprised the image didn't get any damage from that. Oh no, it did. 18%. Alright, let's throttle down the engine to keep it from overheating because it is damaged. And uh, we'll come in for a landing with our uh, limited fuel supply. See, it is an emergency. Also, that should have loaded in by now. Oh, there we go, it's loading into 8 kilometers. Yeah, for some reason, whatever limit you set things to, 
it actually ends up being like a higher limit, a lower value that it loads things in. Don't know why that is. But in any case, I'm definitely going to have to uh, move that carrier because as you can see, the frame rate has gone, nope, not today. All right, let's go ahead and turn off the engines. Fly it sideways onto the runway. Because what's the worst that could happen? You know, oh, I wasn't expecting part of it to blow up as I came in for a landing. I honestly was not expecting that. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Something blows up. What was that, anyhow? Uh, one of the wing-mounted cannons overheated, apparently. But yeah, that's all for this time. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space. <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? <laughs>